Okay, here we're going to use the second derivative test to determine the relative extrema of this function. So to use the second derivative test, um, if the graph is concave down at a critical number, that would be a max. So concave down would indicate the second derivative is negative. So basically if the graph is if the graph has a second derivative that is negative of it at a critical number, it's a maximum. And then just the opposite for a minimum. So if I found a critical number and found out that the second derivative is positive, it's a critical number because you know the derivative is zero then I would know it's a minimum because a critical number at a point where a graph is concave up must be a minimum. So that's the whole idea about this. So now I'm going to use a second derivative test to determine the relative extrema of this function. So the first thing you have to do, obviously, is to find the critical numbers. So you can find like these points. So that comes from the first derivative. So you use the chain rule here. Simplify it up a little bit. So we know there's one critical number here. It's where the derivative equals zero. So the top of the function equals 0 at x equals 0, or where the derivative is undefined, and x squared plus 1 is will never be 0. So we're good here. That's the only critical number. So now the idea is to plug this into the second derivative to see if the second derivative is positive or negative. So obviously we have to get the second derivative. So this so normally I would say the second derivative is a little bit complicated, so I would just go back to the first derivative test to make my chart. But here the instructions were to use the second derivative. So I'm going to have to find the second derivative. So it's the bottom. Times the derivative of the top. Minus the top. Times the derivative of the bottom. all over the bottom square. So we're going to have to clean it up a little bit. Um, here we go. 1 half times 2 is 1. x times x is x squared. So this cleans up pretty nicely. Um, there's a common factor of x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half up top. So I'm going to have x squared plus 1 to the first minus x squared. So the second derivative would equal the top simplifies into very nicely x squared minus x is zero so the top just simplifies to one the bottom with this coming down will be x squared plus one to the one half times x squared plus one to the first so it's x squared plus one to the three halves so the second derivative turned out to be the result turned out to be pretty simple and as all these problems i would Check it on Wolfram Alpha. I think I already did. So there's the result I should have gotten. I want to make sure I get that right before I go on with the rest of the problem because otherwise it would be pointless. So it's a good thing for you to do as you're doing these homework problems. Um, that looks right. So now we're going to finish the problem. Here comes the easy part. We're going to apply the second derivative test. 
to see if this is a min or a max. So you plug the critical numbers into the second derivative. We only had one critical number, as, re as you may recall, x equals 0. So the second derivative at 0 is 1 over, and you don't have to physically show this substitution because it's obvious that it's going to be positive, which means it's concave up, which means we must have a minimum at x equals 0. We have to determine its y-coordinate. So you plug it into the original function, which is up here. That will get you the square root of 1, which is 1, and we're done. The only thing left to do is to graph it and make sure the graph agrees, and I'll let you do that. That's it.